Okay. My name is Michal, and today I'm going to talk about microservices. So, for those who never heard about microservices, uh, in contrary to the monolithic architecture of, uh, of, a software, that, uh, of software that we write, monolithic uh, architecture is a single unit, one development stack architecture. Um, Microservice-based uh, consists of several applications that are simple, independent, and loosely coupled. That's very important about microservices because uh, on the slide we can see that uh, each microservice connects to a separate database. Uh, so they are quite independent programs. Uh, they, they, run on, they can run on the same server infrastructure, but they can also be distributed uh, among the whole infrastructure. Um, at Lightcurve, at LISC, uh, we implement, we develop uh, multiple microservices that are uh, providing one, actually as a one product LISC service. Uh, one microservice is responsible for uh, retrieving blockchain data. Uh, another one is responsible for uh, connecting to cryptocurrency exchanges to retrieve exchange rates. Uh, those data are combined together actually make uh, uh, another level, actually more high level comparing to uh, a LISC blockchain. There is also another service that uh, allows to start users' data in the cloud. I mean, uh, LISC desktop and LISC mobile data in the cloud. Uh, this is an upcoming feature, but uh, it's very important that uh, users can uh, store their uh, bookmarks and settings. So if you want to go with microservice architecture, uh, the first question, the most important question that you should ask yourself is what uh, problem am I trying to solve? Because microservices uh, are also not a silver bullet. So uh, let's talk about Conway's law. Uh, Conway's law is an adage that states uh, organizations build systems that reflect, that mirror uh, their communication structure. Uh, it's very important in the aspect of microservices because uh, actually how the microservices communicate is also uh, it's important how we design the software. Another question is, uh, do I have any monolithic dependencies? Because if, there is, if our application uh, depends on any uh, monolithic uh, dependency on one particular monolithic component, uh, probably microservices are also not the best solution for this scenario. And another important question, how do my microservices communicate? How do services communicate? So let's assume that simple example, uh, we use Node.js, we use Express Framework, which is very common among, uh, in the Node.js world, and we implement all microservices as particular Express uh, framework-based applications. All of them communicate with, uh, with use of uh, using HTTP uh, protocol. So we assign the TCP port, and they, uh, they access, uh, they connect uh, each other. Uh, for some reason, that might be considered as an anti-pattern. Anti so what's a, what's a better solution than this? Uh, one solution might be a messaging system. So if you add a message broker and switch from Express for your microservices to some other microservice-oriented framework, let's say Molecular, it's very popular uh, among Node.js developers, um, this one actually can use a completely different communication channel. It connects through the message broker and uh, Actually, the whole communication, also status reporting, you don't have it implemented yourself. And the only uh, way where uh, the only part that communicates uh, with HTTP uh, protocol is the API gateway that clients might use. So you still use the same API, but uh, you can use a completely different binary protocol, for example. Conclusions. Uh, 
it's actually very important to consider all available act architectural patterns. I mean, I know that uh, microservices are gaining a lot of popularity recently, but uh, sometimes monolithic architecture also it uh, fits its, pur its purpose. Uh, also, serverless application, uh, serverless applications are gaining a lot of popularity recently. Think about Conway's law. Think about uh, how the particular departments in the company, for example, communicate. And don't be afraid to experiment. I've seen a lot of online resources about microservices that describe the um, popular streaming service, but it's a very special case, I would say. Most of the business applications maybe don't need uh, microservices in that shape, but uh, yeah, that's very important. Don't be afraid to experiment with software engineering. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and uh, if you got any questions regarding microservices, I'll be hanging around. Thank you.